Oh, hello, hello. Hey, hope everybody's doing well. Good evening, good evening. Hope everybody's doing well. So glad to have you with us tonight. Welcome to Covenant Community Fellowship. Tuesday night studying God's word. And uh, I love this one because it talks about us beginning afresh with God. How many of us just really need a new beginning, right? You know, starting over again, how awesome it would be. How often do we get to do that? And I'm not talking about a second chance or a fifth chance. I'm talking about a new beginning. And it is God who is willing to give us a new beginning. So uh, look, I pray that you will be blessed by this time tonight as we start talking about beginning afresh with God. Again, beginning anew, afresh with God. Maybe you've wrecked your life, you know? Maybe you feel like you crashed into a wall and it's broken all to pieces and that life is not worth living. Maybe you got married to who you thought was the love of your life, and, and then next thing you know, you're now going through a divorce or you went through a divorce, and nobody gets married with the hopes of, of, one, of one day, I'm going to be divorced. Nobody thinks of it like that. So we're going to have a great time. Mother Rice, always good to see you. So good to see you. I thank God for you, Ryan. But starting afresh with God. Or maybe you look at where you are in this stage of life and you say, well, man, I missed that one. Or I missed this with my kids or whatever. I want to let you know that new beginnings in God are not just for the young. And, and there's a familiar text that we're going to look at tonight that I think is, you know, a couple of them, right? And, and texts that you've heard before, you know. You can, you can, I tell you what, you can be sincere and be sincerely wrong. I mean, uh, nobody ever thought they'd hear Creflo saying, I think I, I, I taught it wrong about uh, the tithe and us still being under the, the law of tithing of 10%. Nobody thought that would come. But as you press into God, one of the things that happens when the Holy Spirit illuminates, you'll see things that you've never seen before. And so I thank God that we have the opportunity to study God's word together. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. And so I thank God for this time that we have together. I'm Pastor Frank Woodson of Covenant Community Fellowship Church. We are a kingdom-focused ministry where families come first. And so I just thank God for you. I thank God that we have the opportunity to be together. And I thank God for his word that he sent to us. Now, look, let's get into this word because I think that it is powerful. Let me, boom, let me put a little, oh, wow. Made me come alive. It gave some color to my skin. All right. So, look, so glad to have you with us. Um, again, I'm asking, oh, God, open up the eyes of our understanding because there are so many people up there that as they look back at over their lives, they have gained a reputation that they no longer want. Their name, is their name is associated with something that does not bring you honor or their family honor. But, oh, God, our prayer is that you would give them a new name. And, Father, let your Holy Spirit illuminate your word in our time together. For those of us who have begun again and for those who desire for a fresh start with God, beginning afresh with God. So this is a, I think it's a, it's a wonderful study. So glad that you're here with us. And I ask that God would bless you. Everyone at some time in their life would like a new beginning. We have to tell our children and our grandchildren and our friends that sometimes you don't get a do-over. And if God is so merciful that he allows you to get a do-over, then please don't presume upon his mercy or his grace that it will be there. Receive it as a gift that God has allowed you to survive your choices and decisions to have a new beginning. Right? So what do you want? Let me tell you what happens. People get used to responding to you in a certain way. They get used to dealing with the broken you. 
the fractured you, the sad you, the scared you. And there are some people that they cannot deal with the new you once God has began to rebuild, repair, and restore you. You know, maybe some people met you after you had fallen through the wayside of life with your dreams and visions scattered and all broken inside. And then one day you found out that you didn't have to stay in the shape that you were in and you trusted God and the potter put you back together again. But there are some people that don't know how to deal with the new you. Wow, we're gonna talk about that as well. What do you do in all your life? You gain a reputation. People come in, they just treat you a certain way, but you know God has changed you. You know God is changing you. You know, I think it was the Hawkins family. They wrote a song, a change, a change has come over me. He washed away all my sins and he made me whole again. A wonderful change has come over me. Why won't you let me be different? Why won't you acknowledge the work that God has done and is doing in my life? Well, I want to, we're going to talk about that tonight right? because there are going to be some folks that are going to be set free because of this message right here tonight. Not because I'm teaching it, but because it is God's word and the Holy Spirit will illuminate it. He said, and you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. All right, we're going to go to a familiar uh, passage of scripture uh, tonight, and it, and it is um, chapter 4, 9 and 10, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Oh, wow. This this is a great text. I want you to, to see it. I want you to be a part. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. You've heard this so many times. They called it the prayer of Jabez. They made it, um, they made it about prosperity, but really it was about someone moving into their destiny. All right. Jabez had a destiny. I want you to know that first. Jabez had a destiny. But Jabez was also trapped in a reputation and in a life cycle that he no longer wanted. And he says that it was through no fault of his own. And I want, it's just a couple of verses. He's only mentioned a couple of times. And, and in the section of this, in these, these sections of Chronicles, it begins with, it begins with the lost tribes right? And he was a member or the lost factions of a tribe. Now, he was a member of this tribe. Now, this is very, very interesting. He, he, I just want you to hear this. He was a member of the tribe that came from kings. Now, I want you to hear this again. He was a member of the tribe that came from kings, right? He was a descendant of Solomon. I want you to understand that, that Jabez descended from kings. Wow. But his name meant pain and he had broken away and he was lost and, and, and he was a part of the lost tribe and and, 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 and nobody reminded him of it. Nobody remembered this. Now, this is so very important right here because sometimes you can have an anointing on your life and there's nobody there to tell you about it, right? Even though you're anointed to be great, you can find yourself in a position that is not honorable, and powerful 
is what God has for you. So I want you to see this. I want you to see this. If you look at the beginning of chapter four, you'll see something here. It says the descendants of Judah and, 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 and the kings were descendants of Judah's. The, the throne all the way to Christ was going, was going to come through Judah. I wanted you to see that at the beginning of that. You see, because Jabez had a name that wasn't very kingly. He had a name that did not match the anointing on his life. Some of you have a name that does not match the anointing that's on your life. Wow. And so I want you to see this. So I want to read this to you. I think it's, I think it's pretty powerful. I'm, I'm going to read the ESV. And let's see. It's over here. All right. And it says this. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted, him, granted what he asked. I'm going to go to the middle here and read the English version. Jabez was the man who got his name because of pain, because of the pain that he caused his mother during birth. But he was still the most respected son in his family. And one day he prayed to Israel's God, please bless me and give me a lot of land. Be with me so I will be safe from harm. And God did what Jabez had asked. Jabez, although he was honorable, although he was anointed, he was attached to a moment that he couldn't shake loose. Could you imagine walking around all your life with a name that you can't shake from? Skinny girl, black girl, yellow girl, red girl, some name that somebody attaches to you, not because the world has a problem with it, but because they have a problem with it. Some of us are carrying the baggage from reputations that were passed on from our mama and daddy. Some of us were shaped not only in iniquity in birth, but were shaped in pain after birth. In other words, Jabez's mother had an experience during the time that she was pregnant and she projected her world experience onto that child. How many people are carrying around their mama's baggage or their daddy's baggage or their daddy's name that is associated with who he was and his experience? He said, his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him, bear him with sorrow, right? He said, my name means pain. And Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. God wants to give us a new beginning. I love the scripture that addresses the question that I'm about to ask. When is a thief no longer a thief? The apostle Paul said, let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him work with his hands at an honorable work that he might have to begin to give to the poor. A thief is no longer a thief until he becomes something different than he was. It, it's not enough to stop doing wrong. 
godliness and righteousness is not you stopping or me stopping doing wrong, but that we would begin to do what is right, that we would become righteous men. It is not the avoidance of sin. Oh no, my brother, it has to do with us living out God's word that we become something different than what we were. There's some folks that I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped snorting, I stopped cussing, I stopped doing all of this stuff. But that doesn't bring forth the blessings of God. God has to give you a new name so that you will be known as someone who is different. You can't call me bruh bruh anymore, a little sis anymore. I've got a new name. There's a new name written in glory and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. There's a new name written in glory and it's mine, Lord, it's mine. You see, it's only when you become something different than what you were that the world can begin to call you for where you now are. I always say it like this, if you're sitting in a seat, when, you, when, when everybody walks in the door, you're still in that seat where they've seen you high, they've seen you, they've seen you drugged out, they've seen you wasted, they've seen you all kind of things that said, I am a broken human being. If you continue to sit in that same place, operate in that same place, then they're going to identify with you the same way because the world has gotten used to responding to you sitting over here. And when people come in, because you had not moved for so many years, they talk to you the way they used to talk to you without even looking at you. In fact, they don't even see you anymore. You are an autocomplete. You are lost. You are losing. You, you have wasted your life. You are, you know, you've just you just messed it, messed it up. You just thrown it away. You threw away your marriage, your career. They just see you stuck in a lame position, stuck in what Christian and in calls the slew of despond. In Pilgrim's Progress, he talks about it, it's, it's almost like a tar pit, a quicksand, and you can't move your feet. You're just stuck there, even though you don't want to be there. And so people have got, gotten used to when they come in, seeing you in a lame position. But what happens is when you get up from your old position and began to position yourself in a new position, then they are forced to respond to you differently because you are no longer here, you are there. And they'll call for you over here. Don't run over there and get in that chair so you can talk to them. Make them have to turn away from what you used to be to begin to look at and respond to who you are today. That's why you've got to be careful where you sit. You've got to be careful where you walk, who you walk with, and you've got to be careful of who you run with. Jabez was stuck with a name that meant pain, and every time they called him, hey, pain, hey, killer, hey, bulldog, hey, 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 harlot, Every time, hey, adulterer, hey, whatever it is. But when you began to reverse, the adulterer is unfaithful. So now, now I've, I can't stay in the unfaithful chair. I've got to move to the faithful chair and do the things that faithful men and faithful women do. So that when they look at my actions, they say, he is faithful or she is faithful. And people will say, isn't that the one that used to be an adulterer, unfaithful? But they are faithful now. And what happens is, although they try to connect you to your past, they cannot erase the current actions and activities that are redefining who you are, you gotta be willing to move. 
Jabez said to God, he said, God, look, I am landlocked. I've got trouble on every side of me. I'm stuck in a place and in a position that I no longer want to be in. So God of Israel, verse 10, I'm praying to you. I'm asking you, please bless me. I've been on this little island for too long. Please bless me and enlarge my territory, enlarge my borders. I'm tired of seeing the same thing every day. I'm tired of seeing the same looks on people's faces every day. Broaden my territory. My anointing is too big for a broke down situation in living on a little island. Enlarge my territory. See, when I wasn't living nothing, when I was broken, when I was stuck, when I was addicted, when I was oppressed, when I was depressed, all I needed was a little area just to lay my head and to bury my head in the sand. But now I want to live. Please bless me, God, and give me a lot of land. I, I, I need space for what's in me. But the gifts that are in me that I'm ready to let come forth, I need space. I need a new computer. When I was broken down, I was satisfied with that old piece of computer. But I need something better now for the work enlarge my territory, God. The car I drove, it was enough. It was a Ford, a fix or repair daily. But I wasn't going anywhere, so it didn't bother me. And, and, and I didn't have to put money into it all the time fixing it because I wasn't going anywhere. But, oh, God, bless me now and give me a lot of land. Enlarge my coast. I can only hang out with these folks and those folks. I need a new crowd, God. I need a lot of land. I'm beginning to see things differently. My brother Marcus, used to say, I got my sight back. I can see some stuff now. I couldn't see any further than my pain. I couldn't see any further than what they had mislabeled me and how they had addressed me. Oh God, forgive me. For, for the years that I've wasted lowering myself to a standard that was lower than the destiny that you had prepared for me. Please bless me now, God. Bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. And God, and be with me so that I'll be safe from harm. There are some folks that are going to hate on me, berate on me. There are people that are going to try to bring up my past to discourage me. There are people that are going to call me an old name, even though I'm in a new place. Oh, God, be with me so I will be safe from the harm that comes from them. so that it might not bring me pain, that it might not grieve me. Oh Lord, enlarge my territories. You see, when it's time for a new beginning, God doesn't leave you stuck in a slew of despond. He doesn't leave you stuck in, in, in a tar pit. He doesn't leave you stuck in quicksand. God lifts me up and he puts me on solid ground. Things that I could not do before because of the situation I was in, I now do because I'm in the new situation. And after a while, people will begin to say, I got it. It's not that Sally didn't want to go anywhere. She didn't have transportation. The roads were in disrepair and there was no bus line close by. She was landlocked. Some of us have been landlocked because of the relationship. Some of us have been landlocked because of our skill level. Some of us have been landlocked because of our education level. All of those things can be addressed 
if we'll stop and pray to God. God, I've been landlocked too long. I need for you to enlarge my territory because the people that I need are not, are not down here in this land called brokenness. The, the, the people that I need to open doors are not hanging out in Lodabar with me and Mephibosheth. The people that I need to, to give me understanding or to invest the resources in the vision that you've given me. Oh God, in this little island of brokenness that I've lived my life on in these four walls, Father, there's not even enough room for them to come in here. Enlarge my territory, God. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not operating out of fear anymore. I'm inspired by a hope of what I can be because your word now is shining through like the sun. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I'm not what I used to be. A change has come over me. I'm different than what I used to be. And I'm more like what I was meant to be. The old folks used to say, can't no grave, ain't no grave gonna hold this body down. I've got resurrection in me, I'm rising up. Some folks are looking at me different. They hadn't heard me pray like this before, but it's always been in me. They haven't heard me prophesy, but it's always been in me. They hadn't seen me sober, but that, that the drunkenness, the high was just a distraction to keep me from being who I was destined to be. And against you from seeing the light of God coming forth out of my eyes. See, I, we, we, we've got to be aware We've got to be aware of where we walk. We've got to be aware of where we sit. We've got to be aware of where we run and who we run with. I've got to work that God is doing in my life and I've got to steward it. The world has plenty to offer, but I don't want I don't want the things that I do to mess up what God is doing in my life because I'm beginning to understand that somebody's destiny is tied to my assignment. Somebody's destiny is is delayed waiting on my deliverance. I don't want to mess that up. I know what it's like to be waiting. I know what it's like to have things that are so dear to you delayed. Oh God, be with me. I don't want, God, I don't want to let you down, but I don't want to let the person that is in the valley looking for some little piece of light, a person that is stuck in the end of the tunnel like I was to where I, I looked in the tunnel, there was no up. All I could do was pray and say, God, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Just tell me that and I will suffer for a year. I will suffer for five years. I remember, oh God, just tell me so I can keep going. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? And I'll never forget, God told me, there's a light where you are right now. I know what it is to lose everything. And everything is so many things that you things that you held valuable and once thought dear and built your life upon. Your home, your material blessings, your children, your marriage, your you know, yeah, you know, everything that you had been building the last few years is now gone. I know what it's like to say, God, I know what it's like to deal with oppression and depression. I know what it's like to be delivered from that oppression and depression. 
For those that have it, you may not ever understand, but I will not ever forget what he's done for me. So there are certain things that I have the liberty to do, but I can't do. Because there's some brother that, that wants to know that God really can make a difference in a man's life. And that that brother doesn't have to hold around all the time because that's what men do. I need to know that God can make a difference. And there's some woman, good women, who are waiting on a good godly man, but man, but are afraid because their father was unfaithful. Sister's husband was unfaithful. And they're waiting to know that having God in your life is enough for a man to keep his belt buckle fastened. I gotta know that God can give me a new language, that he can give me a new tongue to speak that will bring power and not damnation. There's somebody that's waiting on you to say that God is enough to do something as simple as you saying no to yourself. It's important how you walk, where you walk, where you sit where you run and who you run with. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm chapter one. That is the first division of Psalms, chapter one, verses one through three. It's a familiar text right here. It's worth the read. Amen. Here's what it says. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Don't join into the sneering. Don't join into the mocking with these folks. I'm telling you, you got to be careful about where you sit because there are seats of power so that if you walk into the room and I'm sitting on the throne, there are some things that you're going to ascribe to me because of where I am sitting. If you walk in and I, and I am sitting over here with 12 CEOs, you're going to think that there's something about this brother right here that is pretty strong to be sitting with these CEOs and having the conversation. You're gonna give, you're gonna let it add to my credibility. If I'm sitting over here and I've, I've, got, I've got the bishops on this side, the overseers, the moderators, I've got all of these folks all around me and, and I am in the circle. It is natural for you to give me a little street cred in those areas, to marvel a little bit, to make some assumptions that this brother must be important. God must be using him to do something. He is anointed to do what he does. He is blessed and highly favored. However, when I sit in the seat of the scoffers, and I'm in the company of mockers. And I join in the sneering at God. Then what happens is my very presence begins to testify what my life is about. 
And if I'm sitting there amening or I'm silent about it, then I myself have joined in. I remember being in Breeze on one Sunday uh, down there in Bessemer Super Highway. Trevor and I, Lady T, we were getting some, some Sunday uh, uh, early dinner and a guy co comes in and he starts talking. Yeah, you know, Mayor Woodfin ain't, and, and there are people around and there are children around and there are seniors around. And this guy's just going off and he's going in on the mayor. And I said, being mayor is a difficult job, but most of us would never know that because we've never been a mayor for one day in our life. So as much as I know, although I don't agree with everything, he's doing a fine job. And any way I can help him, I want to help him. Now, it, doesn't mean, it didn't mean that I agreed with everything, but I don't want anybody to think that my silence is capitulation or agreement to what this person who is mocking and scoff and scoffering and sneering that he and I are the same. We are not, we cannot be different without being different. So in verse one, he says, blessed, blessed, blessed. Like C E V says, oh, God blesses those people who refuse evil advice and won't follow sinners or join in sneering at God. I can't walk with everybody now. I can't walk with an old man who looks wise and he's telling me how to cheat on my wife. He's telling me how to run the young girl. That's a fool, that's an old fool. I can't walk with him lest the witness and the grace and the mercy upon my life be for vain, be in vain and be for not. I can't walk with and I can't stand in the way that sinners take. I, I want you to hear that. Nor stands in the way of sinners. I can't be on the road and travel like traveling like they travel, acting like they act. I can't do it. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. I've got to be different. And here's the thing about being different. When you're ready for a new name, and you're ready for a change, and you're ready to become different than what you used to be. There's one thing to remember, and that is you can't, be, you can't be extraordinary, extraordinary, without being extraordinary. You gotta be the change. And when I'm talking about be the change, I'm not talking about, oh, I'm gonna go help an old lady across the street. Oh, I'm gonna go give a drink of water. That's not what I'm talking about. It's not just that you do different, you have to be different. Man, that dude is different now. People began to look at you that don't know you and they know that you are built differently because you respond differently to the traumas of life. You gotta be different. Being also always precedes doing. The world will tell you that you can do, you can do good, you can live the way you want to live, which is be the way you want to be, as long as you do good things. See, that becomes the hook. That becomes a sheep, in, that becomes a wolf in sheepskin, pretending that I'm doing all these nice things, but when when sunset comes, I began 
to do my dirt. I pay my tithe, but I don't pledge my allegiance. I pay my taxes, but I don't pledge my allegiance to God. I'm, I say I, I'm with him, but I don't lift his flag, his banner. I gotta make a change. If I'm different and act the same, then I'm not different. This isn't rocket science right here. Now that God has come into my life, I feel different. That I feel different. I know. The old folks used to say, I. No, I've been changed. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. And the angels in heaven done signed my name in the book of life. God has given me a new name. There's a new name over in glory and it's mine. Yes, it's mine. There's a new name over in glory and it's mine. Oh Lord, it's mine. Beginning afresh with God, where do I begin? And what happens when you ask God to give you a new name? Where do I begin? One thing is stop trying. I've been saying that more this week than ever before. Stop trying to please God. There is no such thing. People that try never do. Be the change. Be about it. Do it. So, uh, you know, I give people a hard time. I said, oh, man, I tell you what, try to take this phone out of my hand. And they always reach over and they pull the phone. I said, no, 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 no. That's taking the phone out of my hand. I want you to try to take it out. See. Mm. 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 There's a difference when we say, okay, I'm going to try, but that's a fuzzy agreement. That's not a commitment. I'm going to get the phone. That's what I did. I, 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 I got the phone. Stop telling everybody about your plans to do something tomorrow. And then when tomorrow comes, you, you say it again about your plans to do something the next day. Your plans, your trying, and your attention, intentions don't get it done. Once you make up in your mind that this is what you are going to do, then you have to be about it. I want a different result. Change the ingredient. If you're tired, of what's happening in your relationships, if you're tired of what's happening in your home, if you're tired of what's happening on your job, if you're tired of what's happening, happening in your broader family, if you're tired of it and it doesn't seem like anybody cares about change and it doesn't seem like anyone wants to do what is right, it doesn't seem like anybody wants to glorify God, you may feel hopeless, but the truth of the matter is this right here, all it takes is you changing just one ingredient for the outcome to be different. Now, look, I laugh and joke and a lot, you know, to keep from being so serious. But I know that you have the power to affect change. I know that. I know that you can go into a, a room, into a building, and change the whole atmosphere there. I know that. I know that if you go down to, to the police station and you slap the captain in the face, I'm telling you, you're going to affect change. You are a change maker. You're about to change the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is about to respond to you with full effect. So many of us have the faith to believe that we can make a change by doing something negative. 
In fact, we have great faith. I know that if I go into the police station and slap the captain, I'm about to change the atmosphere and the atmosphere is about to respond to me. What if we had that same faith about change to the positive? All it takes for you to make it affect a change, effect a change in your family is to be the one ingredient that shows up that is now different than it was. All of the other ingredients, all of the other attendees must begin to react and respond different because you have changed the power of one. You gotta have as much faith that you can bring joy as you do, that you can bring chaos, that you can bring peace, just like you can bring chaos and drama. And you gotta believe that. And when you believe that and begin to affect that environment, then the environment will begin to respond to you. All it takes for that cake to come out differently is for you to change one ingredient. And all it takes for things to turn around within your home, it's not that everybody says, amen, we're going to stop doing this and stop doing that. All it takes is one person, and that is you, to say, I will follow God. I will do the right thing the right way. And when you do that, that every other ingredient in the room, every other ingredient in the cake is going to taste differently because you dared to say yes to God. You dared to believe God. Well, look, our time is up. I hope that this time has been good for you. Are you ready for a change with God? Are you ready to begin afresh with God? I told you at the beginning that new beginnings are not just for the young. Are you ready to begin afresh with God? You are the only ingredient that requires for outcomes to be different. You don't have to wait on the crowd. You don't have to wait until you have um, uh, uh, an applause. And the day that you hear God's word, harden not your heart. It's pretty cool. God is for you. God wants his best for you. you got, that's got to be a settled issue. You ask God to give you a new name, it will be accompanied by a new behavior. And that behavior will begin to engrave you deeply and give you a new character. When you get a new character, you will become known for something different than what you used to be. Well, praise be unto God. Uh, I hope you hold on to these verses, First Chronicle chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, powerful verse. Although, although Jabez was a descendant of kings, boom, and in line of the throne, he had a name that made pain, that meant pain, because he had caused pain to his mama. His mama gave him a name that she attached to a passing moment as opposed to attaching to his future. God help us. Well, look, we love you. Remember, be careful where you sit, be careful who you walk with, and be careful who you stand around, hang around. Look, we love you so much. We thank God for you. We will see you on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. I hope you'll be there. I hope you'll be there. If you need directions, just inbox us and we'll make sure you get the directions. Um, 9.30 till 11 o'clock and then we'll, break, we'll be free to fellowship. 
but I thank God for you. And I pray God's blessings on you. And remember, be a light for the most high God. Somebody's destiny is tied to your assignment. You've got to get this thing right. Look, God bless you. God keep you. We will see you Sunday morning. Remember to do it God's way.